And we're back at it for this uh, last week of spring 2024. It's underway Monday, 17th day of June 2024. The summer solstice is this Thursday, the 20th. It's a day early this year. Of course, we had a leap day. So we'll do it on the 20th. That'll be the longest day of the year. Still long days. Sunrise this morning, 5.03. Sunset tonight, 9 o'clock sharp. Now, the sun will not come up any earlier than 5.03, but it will go down a little past 9 for the rest of the week until we get, of course, uh, to Thursday. And then gradually, almost incrementally, the days will get a little bit shorter. But we are still chilly. It was a cold weekend, all things considered. I mean, here we are well into June, and it's only 54 degrees outside right now uh, with a few high clouds. Complete weather forecast is coming up below normal today. Slightly below normal on Tuesday, then we start turning up the thermostat by Wednesday, and it's going to be downright hot by Friday and Saturday. We still have not hit 90 degrees yet this year. That's pretty rare. We are, by the way, by the end of the week. Forecast details are on the way. They always are. News is on the way. It always is. Good sports weekend. For fans of the local baseball teams, the Mariners sweep the defending world champion Texas Rangers. Shut them down with ease, as a matter of fact, including a nice shutout yesterday. And the Wenatchee Apple Sox went up to Kamloops, British Columbia, and just whoop, made the North Paws, which they hadn't played them. Big victory yesterday. Sox are hot. Mariners are hot. We'll have that in sports. In the back half of the program, Allie Jordan will be joining me from Elevated Marketing. Her organization is taking over the Wenatchee Valley's 4th of July celebration this year. Good for Allie. We'll have Allie Jordan here live in the back half of the program. Two minutes after the hour, 54 degrees, high clouds, a little windy, here we go. Our tour around the valley in north central Washington, the Wenatchee Heights camera uh, starts things off. As you can see, it's pretty shadowy out there again because of the, that's a big train coming through town. Look at the size of that sucker. Looks like it's heading off to the Seattle area. That's a, that's a big old train. So if you're heading down to the pipes right now, you're probably gonna be blocked by the railroad tracks. There's the Wenatchee Valley here on this Monday morning. We only hit 64 on Saturday. That was our afternoon high. Yesterday's high was 65, but the overnight low Saturday into Sunday was 45 degrees. That was just two degrees off the record low. It was chilly. Keep in mind, 64 and 65 are high temperatures on Saturday and Sunday. Our normal high is 78. Yeah, it was a chilly and windy weekend but things are gonna improve. Let's head on up to number one canyon on the far west side of the valley and take a peek there. Good morning, we used that camera the last couple of days here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. You look at the skies above the East Wenatchee Bench and it looks pretty blue and pretty clear. Over the Wenatchee side, not so much, but in any event, that's a nice view there from our number one canyon camera. Up to Leavenworth we go, high atop the Tumwater camera or the Tumwater Canyon camera. It's not actually in the Tumwater, of course. We wouldn't be able to see anything if that was the case. Good morning to Leavenworth. Looking good on this Monday. And speaking of looking good, hello, Cashmere. And monitor a little bit of it off into the distance from our Hay Canyon camera. And the Wenatchee River is running pretty good. It's, it's going to run pretty good for a while. They even had a little bit of light snow on Mission Ridge over the weekend. It's not unheard of for this time of the year, but the snow is not completely melted yet either on Mission Ridge, and normally this time of the year it's gone, but there's still some patches of snow, especially on the north facing slopes of Mission Ridge. And here we are, June 17th. We are going to have a warming trend. It's coming. It ain't happened today, but it will by the time we get to Wednesday. It will start warming up to right around normal, and then we'll be pushing 90 degrees, if not into the 90s, by the time we get to Friday and Saturday, just in time for the Wenatchee Pride Festival at Memorial Park. So it looks like we're finally gonna break 90 for the first time this year. We're still under the influence of that low system that came in on like Thursday into Friday. It's still out there, which is why we still have some cloudy and breezy conditions and cool temperatures, but at least the humidity is higher than it should be, and we'd like that. So there you go. From the National Weather Service, it looks something like this. Uh, mostly sunny. It's going to be a little breezy, especially early afternoon is when the wind will be at its peak. We'll top off at 70. It'll be a pretty consistent wind, about 15 miles an hour. But gusts above 20 is certainly not out of the realm of possibility. Still breezy tonight, but eventually dies down. Clear and chilly. 49 for the overnight low. Again, our normal overnight low is 55, so it's going to be another cool one. 
We're looking pretty good on Tuesday. Not a lot of wind to talk up. Almost normal high temperature, 76. And then finally, on Juneteenth, we hit 80 and then to 88. And then Friday, 93. 94 on Saturday and then a cool down on Sunday. But we're finally going to break 90 and we're going to do it the day after summer begins. The summer solstice is on Thursday. All right, those are your weather details when we come back to the news. And there's a lot of it on this Monday. You're watching Wake Up on Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. The family at the Eppladalen want to help your loved one feel at ease in their new home environment. Eppladalen offers beautiful one bedroom and studio apartments. Residents enjoy three delicious home style meals a day, laundry service, housekeeping service, and encouragement to make themselves cozy in their new home. Eppladalen welcomes your family to come and visit their family. Eppladalen, independent and assisted living. They make the complicated easy for you. Call today for a tour. There's no place like home, because home is where we're totally comfortable. It's where we can be ourselves and let our guards down. It's where we make memories, and we're always imagining new ways to keep it totally comfortable. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air, heat and air, call Alpine Air. Come on, I'm a certified technician. I was trained to take good care of you. Nine, I've only been to the dealer. I've been coming here for years. These guys are great. Look around. The BMW, the Jag, the Volvo, they're all waiting for regular service. Well, the BMW has a little computer issue, but that's nothing we can't handle. Come on in. From regular maintenance to computer troubleshooting, trust the Global Car Care technicians with your import, diesel-powered, or domestic vehicle. Global Car Care, they speak your car's language. Danke schön. Celebrate this great country of ours at Rockfest in Rock Island, June 29th. Four rockin' bands start at 1 o'clock on the stage at the golf course until the fireworks begin. So bring your chairs, pack a picnic, or enjoy one of the many on-site food vendors. Link will be offering a free shuttle to the golf course from downtown Rock Island. Rockfest, the last Saturday in June. Find them on Facebook. And thanks to Rockfest 2024 supporters John Port at Real Homes and the Town Toyota Center. The sun is doing its best to get away from behind the clouds. It will eventually. Uh, we'll get up to, well, not particularly warm. Anyway, around 70 or so, but we gradually warm up with lots of sunshine. By the time we get to the first day of summer, first full day of summer on Friday, it's going to be downright hot. It's eight minutes after the hour, authorities have identified the 28-year-old mother who was found dead in an apparent homicide on Tuesday night. Cynthia N. Ring was discovered after police were called in to conduct a welfare check by Ring's family. This happened at about 9.26 in the evening last Tuesday. Officers found her body in a locked apartment in the 500 block of Eastmont Avenue. Her four-year-old son was also present, unharmed. East Wenatchee Assistant Police Chief Eric Hampton named Ring on Friday as the victim of the homicide, although he did not release the cause of death. Earlier this week, police said Ring appeared to have died by violence. Hampton said in an unnamed suspect has been identified as currently being sought by police on suspicion of second degree murder. Ring's child is healthy and in the care of family members. The Wenatchee City Council voted unanimously on two new city ordinances on Thursday dealing with homelessness. One makes unpermitted camping in Wenatchee Parks a criminal offense rather than a civil infraction, and the other penalizes merchants if their shopping carts are left abandoned in the community and it allows the city to impound the carts and charge them for storage and disposal. The new ordinances, based on similar city codes in Auburn, goes into effect next month when H.E. City Attorney Daniel Marchant outlined the camping ordinance ahead of the city council's vote. If a person doesn't accept services, and there is space available in um, a shelter, then the tool in the toolbox is um, criminal enforcement. The current code does allow for that civil infraction, uh, but we also have another civil uh, action that we can take, which is an encampment cleanup. 
Um, that encampment cleanup process, though, takes more time. Um, and the criminal enforcement section uh, would allow for immediate action to be taken. There is another uh, avenue that you can take prior to uh, criminal enforcement, which is the proposed ordinance also has a section in it where you can trespass them from the public space because they are not complying um, from uh, with our current ordinances. And that's not just because they may be uh, unlawfully camping in a spot. Um, that this is more, the ordinance is more like a protection of public spaces. Uh, because we're trying to protect the public spaces for everybody in the city to utilize, uh, not just a, a, a space for uh, no camping. Okay, so I don't, I don't want to say that this is a no camping ordinance. This is more like a protection of public spaces ordinance because it, it allows you to also trespass somebody from a public space that maybe is um, taking drugs in the public space, is fighting in the public space, uh, doing other things like that. In possession of stolen property, like a shopping cart? Yes, so it's for any uh, type of criminal infraction or civil infraction. So if you're, if you're not obeying the law in our public spaces, the ordinance does have a section where you can, the police officers can then trespass that person from that public space for a certain period of time. The new codes are part of an overall overhauling of the Wenatchee ordinances regarding homelessness. They also want to hire a homeless response administrator. That position is yet to be approved by the city council. Well, the last day of school for the Wenatchee School District was Friday, and that also meant the last day of school for Columbia Elementary. Of course, the Wenatchee School Board voted unanimously to close Columbia back on May 14th as the district faces a $9 million budget shortfall. Members of the Columbia community pushed back against the closure since the announcement. That was in January. A lot of supporters regularly attending and speaking at school board meetings. The Wenatchee School District will now operate six elementary schools instead of seven, and Columbia students will be attending Washington or Lincoln Elementary School starting this fall. The district has not announced official plans for what to do with the Columbia campus. Well, heads up for you folks in the Peshastan Dryden area. Today's the day the Peshastan Bridge that connects Highway 2 to the town of Peshastan will be temporarily closed starting today. The closure is part of a countywide project to repair five bridges this summer, but only the Peshastan Bridge will require a full closure over the next couple of weeks, four weeks to be precise. Drivers will detour by way of North Road, the Chumstick Highway and Highway 2. Repairs on the Peshastan Bridge include a partial repaving and the replacement of deck joints. Chelan County declared a state of emergency on Friday because the Pioneer Fire, about 30 miles north of Chelan, continues to burn on the North Shore. The emergency declaration allows the use of local resources without having to go through the governmental bidding process. It was signed by Chairman of the Board of the County Commissioners, that's Kevin Overbay. The county says the wildfire, which began on June 8th, has burned about over around 3,800 acres as of this morning. There are several evacuations in place for the area, including a level three get out now alert for the Rex Creek area that's just north of Moore Point. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. And for updates on the evacuation levels, you can check the Chelan County Emergency Management's Facebook page and the Chelan County Emergency Incidents map. It's only a matter of time before the Douglas County PUD's industrial hydrogen facility is up and running. The new site near the Baker Flats industrial area should begin spl splitting water molecules later this year to create hydrogen for fuel and other applications. The PUD shared this informational video to tell you exactly how it works. Douglas PUD's renewable hydrogen production facility is nearing completion. Hi, I'm Megan Vibbert, Public Information Officer with Douglas PUD. Since 2019, when legislation was passed authorizing PUDs to produce, distribute, and sell renewable hydrogen, a lot has happened. The DOH Associates went to work designing the facility. Land was purchased, a new substation, which was necessary for another PUD project, was sited to accommodate hydrogen production too. Lots of site work like subgrading and rocking had to happen before the underground utilities could go in. The storage tank bundles that needed a crane to offload were delivered and anchored to their foundation. 
These 26 storage tank bundles each weigh 39,000 pounds. Now each bundle is made of three tubes and each tube is one and one eighth inch thick carbon steel. The whole system will be able to store two tons of hydrogen at 7,500 PSI. For perspective, your regular propane tank is closer to 150 PSI. The most visual event happened in October of 2023. The 80 by 136 foot building went up. 44 concrete panels were made off-site, trucked in, and set with a crane on the over 600 cubic yards of concrete in the slab and footings. Since then, contractors have been busy installing equipment, pipe racks, and making connections. Let's take a closer look inside to learn how renewable hydrogen will be produced here. Scott Moon is the district's hydrogen operations and maintenance specialist. The process for producing hydrogen here at Douglas County PUD's hydrogen facility starts with electricity and water. Well water enters the facility where it is purified. The purification process involves reverse osmosis and deionization, which removes contaminants and minerals before it goes to the electrolyzer. The electricity comes into the facility as 13,200 volts AC. This is our rectifier that converts it to DC amperage and voltage. From there, that DC current comes over. It'll drop down in to the two cell stacks that'll be in this enclosure where the electrolysis takes place. So that's where the oxygen and the hydrogen are split. The oxygen will go out the backside to a process which removes residual moisture, cools the gas before being vented out the roof. The hydrogen goes through this process here, which removes and drops out the majority of the moisture, cools the gas, it comes out of the top, it goes over to that skid there, which is an HPS, hydrogen purification skid, where it then goes through a deoxo to remove any of the residual oxygen that was carried over in the hydrogen from the cell stacks. From there, it goes through a drying process before leaving the HPS, heading out to the compression and ground storage where it eventually will be loaded onto tube trailers. Now that we're getting close to producing hydrogen, construction is underway at our East Wenatchee headquarters for the fueling station, where you will be able to fill up your hydrogen-powered car or fast charge your electric vehicle. Take a look at some of the photos we're gonna throw up on the screen, cause some of these items may be yours. A search of, of Wenatchee residents turned up a whole bunch of property that's presumed to have been stolen, police are hoping to return the gear to its owners. All kinds of stuff, power tools, firearms equipment, auto repair supplies. If you recognize any of the property in these images, reach out to Wenatchee Police Detective Brian Hewart. For more information, investigators say the alleged thefts that scooped up some of these items may date back for more than a year. And Friday was the last day for Steve Crown as the Chief of Police. For the City of Wenatchee, during Thursday evening City Council meeting, the Wenatchee City Council honored Chief Crown with a proclamation as he finishes 33 years in law enforcement, including seven as the Chief of Police. Wenatchee Cafe gave Crown its own acknowledgement for his work with its substance abuse recovery programs. Mayor Mike Poyer is in the process of selecting Crown's successor. He thanked the City of Wenatchee with his wife, Kim. Um, to the Council, thank you. Uh, without a doubt, you wouldn't see all this. You wouldn't see the fact that this department is one of the finest in the state, and I appreciate it. Mayor Poirier, thank you for your confidence. Laura, thank you for being a good boss, giving me a day off once in a while. <laughs> but thank you, City of Wenatchee, uh, sheriffs at the back of the room, thank you so much for your partnership, CAFE, um, great addition to this valley. Uh, it's been a great uh, relationship and I just appreciate everything. And best of luck to Chief Crown and his future endeavors. Must be nice to get up on a Monday and go, I don't have to go to work. 
perhaps ever. That's the news at 20 minutes after the hour. The news will come your way tonight on television at 5, 6, and 10 if you want to find out what the heck's going on around here. That's what we do the news for. 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock if that doesn't work in your schedule, and we get that. Our news will be up and running on the World Wide Web. It'll be on our homepage, ncwlife.com, our Facebook page, our uh, YouTube page, our app. You can't miss it. We're kind of everywhere. If you haven't downloaded our app yet, that's how you go about doing it, that QR code right there. And if there's something out there that warrants our attention, you think it might be newsworthy, send us an email. News at ncwlife.com. Mariners broke out the brooms over the weekend. So do the Apple Sox. Sports is two minutes away. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. Most of us are in touch with the internet in one way or another all day long. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, and in touch. Mobiletel cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with your choice of speed makes life better. If you need fast, reliable internet, or maybe an upgrade, or you just have questions, connect with us by visiting localtel.com or call 509-888-8888 today. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way, we got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. you find it at Mark. Full service at a low, low price. Hey folks, this is Blueberry Carey bringing you a public service announcement. With today's fast pace, sometimes you just need to be reminded to just breathe. Come on out to Blueberry Hills and enjoy the panorama of beautiful blueberry fields and these gorgeous North Cascades Mountains. Your food is always cooked fresh to order, and our down-home scratch country recipes are always well worth the wait. Our delicious breakfast dips, pies, and pastries await you and your family. So come on out to Blueberry Hills in Manson. It's where the world is coming to. At Coldwell Banker, their people, their company, are cut from a different cloth. They see, hear, sense, and feel things that other people don't. They have a unique appreciation for the thing called home. Because of this dedication, Coldwell Banker has thrived for over a century. This is why they are ranked number one on agent trust. Coldwell Banker. They do real estate with higher standards and have been guiding people home since 1906. Twenty-three minutes after the hour, a good weekend by Mariner pitchers topped off yesterday with Logan Gilbert. Don't miss the Grant County Fair in Moses Lake, August 13th through the 17th. Okay, we're back. Logan Gilbert struck out nine, uh, gave up just a couple of hits over eight innings of work. The Seattle Mariners beat Texas five to nothing yesterday. So they sweep the series. Seattle improves to 12 games over 500. They've won seven of eight and nine straight home series. They have, trust me. Highlights are coming up. Highlights are coming up. This is into right field. Canzone drifting towards the chalk near the crowd, and Dom Canzone reaches over and he makes the catch. It's a one, two, three, top of the first from Logan Gilbert. Mariners left two men on base. Into right field. Garcia chasing after it. It short hops the wall. Mitch Hanniger scores from second base, and Luke Rayleigh. Julio a chance to extend the lead here to the backstop and Rojas easily into third base. This really kicks away and here comes Rojas home. Kister throw, Dunning's tag, safe at home. The Mariners just stole a run. You're right, Mike. I, I can't ever remember seeing a ball take that funky of a bounce that direction that far. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, Ubermitt clearly gets in there just before the tag from Dunning. There's a rare curve from him. Locklear, a bolt to left field. There it goes. Up to Edgar's porch. 
The second home run of the young career of Tyler Locklear. Well, he's going to get after a slider. He hits it into Edgars. His second home run since joining the club. Line through the left side for a base hit. Here comes Bliss. He rounds third. Rayleigh into third base. Dom Canzone tacks on for the Mariners. It's four to nothing in the bottom of the eighth inning. Watch out, man. 94 up and in. Here it comes Rayleigh. And he crosses home plate standing. Now the Mariners pick up another run. Five to nothing. Mariners have scored two runs on. What was that? Locklear slide tackles it One point. and gets it to first base in plenty of time. Uh, he has had a couple of gems over there at first base. This is cued right off the end on the breaking ball. Probably spinning away from him too, but gets into that slide, able to pick it clean and a perfect throw. Lined left field. Rayleigh comes in, he flattens out and he makes the catch for out number two. And that ball is headed to the ground in a hurry. Good concentration by Luke Rayleigh. Ground ball to Locklear. Charges at first base, and this one is over. The Mariners. Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, and Louis Castillo combined over the weekend, giving up only seven runs and struck out 21 Rangers in the three-game sweep. Mariner manager Scott Service afterwards, yeah, he's a pretty happy guy. Can't say enough. Um, you know, they won the World Series last year, and uh, we talked about it from the beginning of spring training, uh, what it was going to take. Um, we go through different things throughout the course of a season, um, but you know, with us, it's it's always been about our pitching, and nobody uh, better than than Logan uh, Walter uh, Gilbert out there today. That was fantastic. Uh, you know, in total control of the ball game. Uh, had great stuff, of course, but the execution of the slider. And the split finger was uh, electric today. That's a really tough pitch. And there's no way to game plan for it or look for it. The ball's moving all over the place. And, uh, you know, his focus throughout the game was uh, was awesome to see. And I hope, uh, you know, everybody appreciates this as much as I do and our pitching coaches do because that's really hard to do. Um, but, you know, great cat crowds all weekend. You know, packed house, Father's Day. Starter runs eight scoreless. Um, doesn't get a whole lot better. And then, you know, offensively, we got guys chipping in. Um, doing just enough every day, and those add-on runs are huge, uh, and late in the ball game, and finding a way to get it done there. So, um, you know, it, it's about pitching. It's been that way all year. It'll continue to be, but you know, we are seeing signs, uh, guys getting uh, big hits for us offensively, um, and that's what it takes. And it's timely hitting. It's great pitching and tremendous defense. I can't get away uh, from what our guys do defensively. You know, Tyler Locklear, great play later on there in the game. Um, just all over the, the, the ballpark here in this homestand. Our guys were, were really focused. A lot of close games. Uh, a little bit of a breather today, which is good for me <laughs> and, and the coaching staff. But uh, excited. Uh, we've earned an off day. Yeah, and they have an off day today. Then they're on their way to Cleveland to take on the Guardians. A three-game series. It starts tomorrow. Bryce Miller will start for the Mariners, by the way. He'll go against Tristan McKenzie. To the American League West scoreboard from our friends, at Les Schwab, the Mariners' lead over the Rangers is now eight and a half games after their victory yesterday. They have a nine-game lead over the Astros, who knocked off the Tigers four to one. They had a doubleheader yesterday. The Twins beat the Athletics six to two in the opener and eight to seven in the nightcap, and the Giants doubled up the Angels and then some, thirteen to six. The Wenatchee Apple Sox sweeping the Kamloops North Paws over the weekend in British Columbia. They're now seven and two. On the road this season, Cannon Perry drove in four runs Saturday and four runs on Sunday. The voice of the Apple Sox, Joel Norman, has the wrap. The Apple Sox earned their second series sweep of the season as they defeated the Kamloops Northpaws by a 15-5 score on Sunday afternoon at Norbronk Stadium. It was a pitcher's duel in the series opener on Friday. Evan Canfield had eight strikeouts and one unearned run allowed in eight innings of a 2-1 to one win for Wenatchee that day. The next two days, the bats broke out. A 13-2 triumph on Saturday, followed by the 15-5 win on Sunday. Cannon Peary was the offensive hero 
over the weekend with eight runs driven in, four of them on Saturday when he finished a home run away from hitting for the cycle. Then he would get his home run on Sunday, a grand slam as part of a five-run fifth inning for Wenatchee. The Apple Sox have won five straight games. They are two games ahead of the Edmonton Riverhawks for first place in the North Division, and they are home again on Monday night to take on the Dub C Fish Sticks in non-league play at 6.35 p.m. With your Apple Sox update, I'm Joel Norman. Thank you very much, Joel. To the West Coast League scoreboard we go again from our friends at Les Schwab, Edmonton, who is chasing us. Keeps chasing us. They beat Victoria 5-4 in 10 innings. A lot of extra inning games yesterday, as a matter of fact. And tight ones, too. Corvallis just by a run over Port Angeles. Springfield got by Cowles 8-6. Walla Walla by just a run over Yakima Valley. Bend beat Portland in 10 innings, 1-0. And Bellingham beat Kelowna 2-1. So outside of the Wenatchee victory, all the games yesterday in the West Coast League were nail biters. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Monday, the 17th day of June. If you want to, you can celebrate Global, uh, global Garbage Man Day today. Somebody's got to take the garbage away, so heads up to those folks. National Eat Your Vegetables Day, which should be every day. National Apple Strudel Day, which maybe should be every day. It's National Cherry Tart Day. We're not doing any of those. We're wishing Iceland a happy birthday today. It is Icelandic Republic Day. It was on this date, 1944, that the, uh, the folks in Denmark said, you're on your own. Iceland was a territory of Denmark for a long period of time, but over the centuries, of course, the folks in Iceland developed their own language, their own culture, their own economy, their own autonomy. And finally, Denmark said, sure, you can have your independence, enjoy. Fun facts about Iceland. Iceland has the most northerly capital in the world, of course, Reykjavik. The capital of Iceland is just below the Arctic Circle, so they're getting about 24 hours of daylight right now. Uh, of the 400,000 people who live in Iceland, about 70% of the population live in the general Reykjavik area, so they're all kind of right there. Iceland is one of the wealthiest and most developed countries in the world. Iceland has the highest number of bookstores per capita. In fact, about 10% of the residents of Iceland will publish a book in their lifetime. That's pretty impressive, they're into reading. Swimming courses are mandatory in Icelandic public schools and private schools. You can't graduate from school unless you know how to swim. That's pretty interesting. Iceland is a member of NATO, but they don't have an army. I don't know how that works out, but okay. Uh, beer was banned in Iceland until 1989, and maybe this might be the most interesting fact of them all. The last McDonald's in Iceland closed 15 years ago. They're not into that there. Happy birthday, Iceland. It's your Republic Day or Icelandic Independence Day or something like that. Anyway, we love you, Iceland. It's 33 minutes after the hour. Today in history, the Battle of Bunker Hill on this date in 1775. The British won, uh, but we, uh, we fought them pretty good. And when it was all said and done, even though the British won the Battle of Bunker Hill, when they went back uh, to their camps and the Americans went, the British went, ah, crap, they're gonna actually fight. We thought we'd just roll right over these revolutionary Americans and just keep our, keep our territory, but turns out they're gonna fight. Oh well, it showed that they were willing to fight for their, for their independence, even though we lost the Battle of, Bunk Battle of Bunk Bunker Hill in a way we kinda won. On this date, 1885, 139 years ago, there's the headlines from the front page of the New York Times. The statue is here, made of the cross of the Atlantic, the Statue of Liberty, a gift, just a gift from France to the United States because they said, we love you, U.S. Here's the statue. Don't forget, you got to build a pedestal, and then they didn't build a pedestal. It just sat there in crates in New York Harbor because, uh, well, we didn't build a pedestal. Um, Boston and Philadelphia said, if you ship the statue to us, we'll build a pedestal. We'll do it. New York City, they're not doing anything about it. That changed, of course. New York City got around to building a pedestal to put the Statue of Liberty on, but it showed up on our shores 139 years ago today. 61 years ago today, in the case of Abington School District versus Shep, the Supreme Court rules eight to one that sponsored prayers and Bible readings in classrooms 
was unconstitutional. Eight to one was the vote. It was actually more like nine nothing. Justice Potter Stewart agreed with the other eight justices, but he he wanted the he wanted to send the case back down to the appellate division for more argument. Uh, since that ruling, and this has been 61 years, uh, saying you can't have school-sponsored prayers and school-sponsored Bible readings in classrooms, uh, over 150 resolutions have been drafted to overturn this by constitutional amendment. Now, one of them has come even close to passing. Nobody knew it was the beginning of the end for Richard Nixon, a third-rate burglary at the Democratic National Headquarters at the Watergate Building in Washington, D.C. Virgilio Gonzalez, Bernard Barker, James McCord, A. Eugenio Martinez, and Frank Sturgis are caught, are caught after they broke into the offices to plant bugs at the Democratic National Headquarters at the Watergate process and the Watergate building, and so began the process that would take a little over two years that would bring down the President of the United States. Friday, June 17th, 1994, I remember this in a big way. I think we all do. We were watching the NBA Finals. It was, uh, I think it was like the, the Rockets and the Knicks, and all hell started breaking loose on the freeways in Los Angeles, the televised low-speed chase. O.J. Simpson, who was supposed to turn himself in at 11 o'clock in the morning, and then it was 12 o'clock, and then it was 1 o'clock, and then it was like, he ain't turning himself in, now he's a fugitive. Well, O.J. Simpson is arrested for the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and Ronald Goldman. What a crazy day that was, 30 years ago today. Two birthdays, Ruth Graves Wakefield is one of the finest Americans this country has ever produced. She was born this day in 1903. She was from Massachusetts, she and her husband, and, and she made these homemade chocolate chip cookies. She invented the chocolate chip cookie, Ruth Wakefield did. And during World War II, she sent off care packages to all the soldiers from her town in Massachusetts who were serving overseas. Here's a care package. And not only did the soldiers from Massachusetts dig these cookies, but all their buddies did too. And they said, hey, could you have Mrs. Wakefield send us some cookies too? It became a phenomenon. And before you know it, it became a worldwide phenomenon. Everybody wanted her recipe for Toll House chocolate chip cookies. She cut a deal with the Nestle people, Andrew Nestle and Ruth Wakefield got together. Uh, she sold him his recipe, her recipe, she sold it to the Nestle people for one dollar. In exchange, she got a lifetime supply of chocolate chips. And now, of course, they make chocolate chips specifically to put in the cookies. Ruth Wakefield and Kendrick Lamar is 37 years old today. Do we have a picture of Kendrick? There you go. Listen to some Kendrick over the weekend. Glad I did. Special thanks to our platinum sponsor. That would be our friends at Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. You know the forecast by now. We're going to be into the 90s on Friday and Saturday. The first real test of your air conditioner. Make sure it works. Give Alpine Air a call. Also, special thanks to our friends at Pool to Spa Services. Have you seen today's hot tubs? Pretty nice. Very nice and very efficient. They have them at Pool to Spa Services on Worthen Street. And special thanks to our friends at Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista. Mike McNaughty wants to know if you use social media for your primary source of news. He'll talk about that. And then right here in our studio, Allie Jordan from Elevated Marketing to talk about 4th of July. Yeah, which also is Independence Day this year. Allie will join us when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Don't miss the Grant County Fair in Moses Lake, August 13th through the 17th. Leading the entertainment list is Diamond Rio, Thursday, August 15th, with special guest Katie Wade. Friday night is 90s favorite Chingy, with special guest DJ Precise. And Wednesday night, two of the best tribute bands in the country, Best of Both Worlds, a Van Halen tribute, and Crazy Train, an Aussie tribute. VIP tickets are available at gcfairgrounds.com. Hey, hon, would you run this around to the wash rack? Oh, okay.
Hey, hon, what happened? They shrunk the truck. The all-new midsize Canyon is now available at Sangster Motors. Have you noticed how expensive it is this summer to feed a family at most restaurants? Even a burger basket for six people can run you 60 bucks. But at Abby's, you can still feed a family of four to six for less than $26. Real value. That's one more reason we're legendary. We know what Abby's customers like on their pizza. Meat. Lots of meat. That's why this month, we're piling on the classic pepperoni, Canadian bacon, and beef. Abby's Triple Topper has the meat you love. And right now, it's on sale. Order your Triple Topper at abbeys.com. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Hey, this is Mike, Mad Dog McDonald, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Listen to me! Now, how do you feel about the fact that social media has basically replaced due process as described in the Constitution? Now, why bother with facts and evidence? Why should we take the time to allow for a trial and let a defendant face their accuser? You're a moron. What's the point of making sure a defense attorney has the opportunity to question witnesses and offer exculpating testimony? I mean, can't we just watch 30 seconds of a Facebook video recorded by some random person's cell phone? I mean, why bother with the Constitution? I mean, this is Mike Mad Dog McNaughty. I want you to stop getting hysterical over nothing. And that's my opinion. When it comes to plumbing, you are likely not the expert. Call After Hours Plumbing. When your laundry room is just a little too tight and you need to expand or remodel, call After Hours Plumbing. Or your hot water heater needs replacing so everyone can have hot water? Call After Hours Plumbing, your local plumbing contractor ready for your home remodels or your commercial business. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue, family owned and operated on North Wenatchee Avenue, right next to Hooked on Toys. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue uses only fresh ingredients handcrafted with love, including authentic Hawaiian barbecue and Japanese style ramen noodle soups. And the bubble teas will keep you coming back for more. Enjoy the culinary tour of the Pacific Rim with Hawaiian barbecue lunches and combo plate classics, as well as ramen noodle soups. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue, enjoy their comfort food like you're one of the family. How do you think like an entrepreneur? I have had it in mind starting my own business. This is all really good to know right now. I am currently making a vision board. I am talking about my well-being, my personal finances, and habits that I would like to work on and to improve myself to be a better entrepreneur. At Kennedy Group, we understand that buying and selling is more than a transaction, and it's more than just a house. This is where you will gather with friends and family, and where a lifetime of memories will be made. But buying a home is more than memories. Oftentimes, it's your biggest financial decision. The agents at Kennedy Group understand this and provide real estate advice based on your goals and dreams. Call us today, and let's find your happy place.
Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. All right, this year uh, on July 4th is going to be Independence Day. I'm told. I love it how the 4th of July and Independence Day fall on the same day, Allie. Isn't that crazy? It's just, it's a beautiful, wonderful thing. Yeah. Uh, Allie Jordan and her company, Elevated Marketing, has taken over the legwork, and this is, a, this is a lot of work to take on. You're taking over from our good friend Kelly Kennedy from Impact Events, who did this for a long, long time. She did, yes. And she, she it just, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, I mean, spreadsheets and logistics and phone calls and everything else. So you, uh, you have some big shoes to fill, Allie, but you're going to go for it. Yes, yes. I'm happy to be able to work on this with the city. <clears throat> Very big shoes to fill. Lots of community involvement. Lots of people who help make this happen. So lucky to have that support still. So anyone from the Wenatchee Downtown Association to the city, the chamber, visit Wenatchee, they've all been really helpful. So that does help ease a little bit of the burden. The, uh, some things are new, some things are not new. Uh, first of all, the fireworks, of course, will be firing off. You all know that. But uh, a couple of changes. First of all, it's, it's going to start, the festivities are going to start just a little bit later in the afternoon. Yeah, so we're really going to focus on the meat of the day, and we're going to start around 3.30 in the afternoon. So the beer garden will open, the food fair, food vendors will open at 3.30. We'll have a community and youth area. Um, and the entertainment stage will start at 3.30. So yeah, we're really hoping to get people down there and focus on, like I said, just that meat of the, meat of the day and then into the amazing fireworks show that they've always delivered. Now, yeah, Kaylee Boggs and her pyrotechnic professionals will be back at it again out on the spit. You mentioned food. Who, who's going to be uh, grilling up the, the good stuff for us this yes, year? Yes, so we've got Freddy's Kitchen coming down. Oh, we've got kettle corn vendors. We've got churros, ice cream. We've got sorbet. We've got coffee, shaved ice. Dually Dogs is going to be there. I was so going to say, you got to have hot dogs. got to have hot dogs I on think the 4th of July. Law, yeah, actually. I think that, yeah, we might get shut down if we didn't offer those. <laughs> People might be in an uproar. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got a lot of variety there, so we're really excited about that. Why the later change? Just because it's pretty hot, or you just, by, by moving the, the beginning of the festivities, up to 3:30, it just simplifies. It just it, it keeps the activities going. There's no dead time. It's just it just made sense. Yeah, I think it just made sense. Um, it is makes for a long day. It's a warm day. Uh, it just gives people the opportunity to come down and then maybe have a dinner down there, and then enjoy the music and some of the activities. So it just really shortens the day for a lot of those people who have children that come down and enjoy. I mean, it makes for a really long hot day when you've got a kid down there for. 10, 10 hours enjoying the festivities. So it really just, yeah, condenses it, gives them the opportunity to enjoy um, enjoy what we have to offer and then right into the fireworks show, so. Who's, uh, who's performing on stage? Who do you have? So we've got a country artist, her name's Kitty May. She's gonna open for us. And then we're still working on one of our second acts. Um, and then Prefunk is going to headline for us. And then Kayla Taylor is going to sing the national anthem for us. As usual. Yes, she's great. And local, fabulous, so really happy to be working with her. How about my group? We, 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 it's like 12 of us, and we all play the accordion. Oh, yeah, I mean, we of course. Yeah. Let's get a big accordion group. Maybe you guys could, could play during the fireworks show. You could take the big band's place, and you could just play the accordion. I'm well, sure it's funny thing is because our first day of rehearsal is actually going to be on July 4th, so oh. we're going to see if I... Well, I never played perfect. the accordion before in my life. You've got so. a perfect test audience. Yeah. You will get, you know, booed or yayed very quickly. <laughs> You'll uh, know. Bear Garden, uh, back again this yes. year. A lot of folks are going, I don't know about a bear garden there. It's not maybe not such a good idea. It's been working out really good. It has been working out really well. It gives those people who are don't have kids or who are of that age want to come down and just enjoy a nice refresh, refreshing beverage um, the opportunity to do that and the Wenatchee Downtown Association is housing the beer garden this year and the beneficiary of uh, the funds raised so we're really excited to be working with them. Um, we won't have a cornhole tournament this year but we will have cornhole in the beer garden so it won't be as structured but the drinks will be there and we're really excited to be working with the tap room by hellbent and pair up cider so we'll have local um, beers and ciders available what's the biggest challenge in this is it working obviously you have to work with the city of wenatchee 
you have to work with the Chelan County PUD Parks Department. You have to work with all kinds of different organizations. Is it is that the, the biggest challenge? Is, is making sure all that is done, all the you know security and one at you police and all that stuff. I would just say, yeah. I mean, the emails, the phone calls, making sure that you're timing. So, one partner that you're working with might be dependent on another and waiting to hear back from them. So it's just being diligent, making the phone calls, sending the emails, and kind of staying on top of stuff. So I'd say that's the biggest the biggest thing right there, yeah. For years and years, the, the city of Wenatchee just wrote a check to pay for the fireworks, and, and that got to be silly because everybody enjoys it. I mean, why should the city of Wenatchee just pay for the whole thing when the people in East Wenatchee and the surrounding communities all enjoy the fireworks. So it's become yes. a, a self-funded organization, has been for a while. So my guess is you're still looking for, for yeah. dough to offset the cost. I mean, yeah. the fireworks alone are pretty pricey. They are. Uh, they're well worth it, but they are pricey. Yeah, we're always looking for community sport, uh, support and donations. Um, you can go to WenatcheeValleyFourthOfJuly.net. Uh, it's the number four, so pretty literal. Um, but yeah, we're always looking for community support. We've been really lucky to wor be working with the Salcedo group of companies. The Chelan County PUD is a sponsor as well. Um, Cashmere Valley Bank, Washington Trust Bank, uh, and a number of others. And a lot of, some of the funding uh, does come from the LTAC dollars. So it is nice for community members to realize that the tourists are really helping pay for this. It's not just coming out of taxpayer dollars. So that's something I like to remind people as well. And another fun thing that we have, and you can donate on the website, is if you donate $50 or more towards that community side of the event, you get entered in to win four tickets to a Seattle Mariners game on July 20th. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's, that's a so sweet that's deal. kind of fun, yeah. So heads up, folks, you know, just, just if you're going watch to the, watch the fireworks either down there at Walla Walla Point Park, is everything is free. I mean, there, yeah, obviously you're paying, but, but there's, no, there's no charge to get in. Nope. But uh, just throw a couple bucks in the in the hopper to help uh, offset the costs on this because a lot of people if they don't go to Walla Walla Point Park will go out on their decks and enjoy the show. Yeah they do so it really is a community event and we're happy to provide it and happy that like you said it's free of charge you can go down there and you can choose to spend money but it is free and it's beautiful location we're right there on that the Loop Trail and down at Walla Walla Park. So yeah, we're really happy to have this for community members. And like years past, we always talk about this, traffic can be a royal pain in the rear end. Not necessarily going in because people kind of kind of work their way gradually into the park, but when the whole show is over and everybody wants to leave, that's a pain to the butt. Lake Transit is uh, pitching in again. Uh, you park your car behind the JC JCPenney's. Uh, at the Valley North Complex and just get a, free, get a free ride. Yeah, we're really excited to be partnering with Link. It's really nice of them uh, to offer this free community shuttle from, like you said, the back of J.C. Penney's to the park and then back out at the end of the night. The shuttle will start around 7 o'clock. They'll start picking people up in the back of J.C. Penney parking lot and then they will be ready to roll right when the fireworks end. They will have all their buses lined up before the fireworks start and then ready to load people and head on out right when right when the festivities conclude. It's the only way to go. And it should be pointed out, people say, well, so what, you're taking a bus, you're still gonna get stuck in traffic. That's not, the link gets, uh, they link, get prioritized. They do. So link when the link buses leave, everybody has to stop and they get to go out first, which is yes. the way you should do it. Yes, yeah, they have a large group of people to get out, so it does help expedite getting guests out of the park quickly. So they are, get first right to exit. All we have to do is get a hold of Burlington Northern Santa Fe and ask them not to run a train yeah. at about 1045 on the night of Thursday, July 4th, but they play by their own rules, yeah. I guess. That's all there is to it. How are you sitting for volunteers? You always need volunteers. Yes, volunteers. We can never have enough volunteers. So again, if you go to the website, WenatcheeValleyFourthOfJuly.net, there's information to sign up to be a volunteer, to donate, to sponsor, to look at the list of activities we have going on in case you might forget. Um, but yeah, we can always use volunteers. Allie Jordan from Elevated Marketing. That means she's really got, have you, have you been touch, touch and base with Kelly at all about how do I do this? Yes, she's been great Good, about yeah. sending information and providing stuff that she's done in the past. And I did work with her a few years ago on this. So I kind of was able to see how things worked out. And so, yeah. 
One more quick plug, and I, before I forget, Relay for Life is uh, yes. is this weekend. You're involved in that as well. I am, yeah. So Gretchen <laughs> Littler has, is spearheading this year's um, Relay for Life event over at the Eastmont track this Friday, um, starting at 6 o'clock. So really happy to be able to just volunteer for that and help support that in any way that I can because it's a really important cause. and. Yeah, so happy to be a part of that. And I'm glad Gretchen is uh, involved in it. The, the, uh, the Relay for Life is one of those deals in a lot of locations, a lot of municipalities and cities. Uh, started out like gangbusters and kind of petered out. Now they don't do it anymore, but we're still doing it here. That's yeah, good. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yes. So happy Allie Jordan, that. Elevated Marketing. Again, <laughs> go to the website or send Allie. It's WenatcheeValley4thofjuly.net. And the fourth is uh, the, the number four. Four. See on television that looks backwards. <laughs> uh, you want to stick around and do the weather when we come back? Yeah, let's right. bring some sunshine. We'll uh, we'll take a break and we'll do the forecast when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the Institute Life Channel. Now there are even more reasons to meet at the Pibus Market. Outdoor dining and tastings. The fabulous Farmers Market. Saturday Artisans on the concourse and your favorites all week long. No matter the reason, it's always time to meet at the Pibus Market. Pibus Market, where community meets. Let nothing stand between you and the tree stand with this great offer on the fast, durable Kubota Sidekick. Featuring a gas-powered engine that delivers a top speed of 40 miles per hour, outstanding acceleration and handling with cargo, and a two-year, 1,000-hour warranty. Get the Sidekick now for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 36 months or save $1,000. When you've been in business for 40 years, it's because you understand change and you put members first, always. Now Works is announcing a change in their membership model. Up to six people on one membership that you can mix and match. The more people, the bigger the discounts. Introducing the Works shared membership model. One membership, friends and family and flexibility. Works, the cleanest, friendliest, most helpful gyms you and your friends will ever join. Tour Moses Lake just a gas tank away. With its abundance of outdoor activities, Moses Lake is a great place to visit. From fishing and boating to exploring the city's attractions, there is no shortage of things to do. Whether you're enjoying any one of the variety of restaurants with the family or an adventure-filled day with friends, Moses Lake has something for everyone. TourMosesLake.com and start your adventure today. Getting ready to wrap up this Monday. Once again, Allie Jordan, everybody, give her a big hand. <sighs> Listen to the crowd. <sighs> yes. They love you. Sick and tired of this cool weather? Yes, I am. This is so unusual. I, I want some heat. I know you like the sun, and I know you like to go up to Lake Chelan and all yes, that good stuff. Yes, don't we all? Well, you're going to have to wait a couple more days anyway. Uh, we are going to warm up. We're going to see high pressure start building up over here in the Wenatchee Valley. There's your warming trend this week, and this is a nice slide because it shows some of the locations that we don't normally show on Wake Up in Anche Valley. For instance, Kellogg, Idaho, and Moses Lake, Washington, and those places. Uh, we're going to be bottoming out today as far as the afternoon high temperatures are concerned, lower 70s, and then up the ladder we go, and I think Allie will be at Lake Chelan on Friday and Saturday because it's going to be sunny and hot. We're finally, we know we haven't hit 90 yet this year. Not what? once. That's got to be a record. Yeah, well, we're going to hit 90 by the time we get to Friday. From the National Weather Service, uh, sunshine today, but windy at a high of only 70. We only hit 64 Saturday and 65 Sunday, so that's going to feel downright balmy. That's still 8 degrees below normal. 49 for the overnight low tonight, and the wind will die down. No wind at all, just a nice light breeze. Very pleasant on Tuesday with a high of 76. Up to 80 we go. We're done with the wind after today and tonight. Whew, thank you very much. 88 on Thursday, which is the first day of spring, the first, uh, first day of summer, the first full day of summer is Friday and 93, Saturday 94, and a little cooler on Sunday. All right, that's it for us. Have yourself a great Monday. We will see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye guys.
Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Live It Up, the show where we explore and discuss how to take your life to that next level and beyond. We cover health, wealth, relationships, and how to create a life that feels good, because after all, that's what we all want. We want to feel good. I'm your host and coach, Fletcher Ellingson, and today on the show, we'll be visiting with Norma Maravilla, owner of Bellas Artes Imports Concept House, which is a lifestyle boutique and it's full of one of a kind.